Hey guys, it's Greg from BitGoblin again, and today I have another Linux Basics tutorial for you all who are learning your way around Linux. In this video, I will show you how to set up a Windows file share using Samba, which will let you share your files with any clients that support SMB, which includes pretty much any modern OS like Windows, Mac OS, Linux, much of the BSDs, and even iOS and Android if you have the right apps for it. It's pretty quick and easy, and if you follow along through the tutorial, you'll soon be able to share and transfer files over your network just like you would if you shared them from a Windows machine. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. Before we get started, let's go over the system that we'll be using in the video so you can replicate it exactly if you choose to do so. The machine I'll be SSHing into is an Alma Linux 8.4 virtual machine that I have running on one of my servers down in the basement. It has two CPU cores, four gigabytes of RAM, and a 30 gigabyte virtual disk. These instructions will work for any Linux distribution. You just may need to change the package manager and massage the file path for the smb.conf config file, depending on your distribution. For example, for distributions that use the apt package manager like Debian or Ubuntu, you'll need to change the dnf install samba command to apt install samba. The only changes I've made to the stock Alma Linux install are updating it, installing the text editor vim, enabling the Apple repository, which I don't actually believe is required for this, changing the host name to samba-demo, and creating a folder which we'll be sharing later. Also note that the CPU and RAM configuration really doesn't matter so much as long as you don't have like a super old and low powered CPU and enough RAM to run your operating system. You can run this on a Pi without issue if that's what you have and realistically you can scale it up or scale it down as much as you need. All right, now for the tutorial. The folder we're going to share today is located at slash SRV slash my share. And inside of it, I have this test.txt file, which we'll touch on later. We're going to try and share it with the name of my share. This can be any old folder that you've created yourself on your main OS drive, like I have done right here, or this can be another hard drive or SSD that you've mounted to this path. Just be sure to change this path whenever you see it in the steps following to match the folder or drive that you're looking to share. Also keep in mind that I'm going to be running as the root user to make it simple, but if you prefer, you can run these commands as another user with sudo privileges and just prefix the commands with sudo. Anyways, now that that's out of the way, the first thing we need to do is install Samba. And to do that in terminal, we just need to run dnf install Samba, and then accept the transaction by entering y when prompted, hit enter, and it'll take a hot second and then it will be installed. Next, we need to edit the Samba config file. Just open up etsy slash samba slash smb.conf in your favorite text editor. My personal favorite is Vim, but whatever you want to use, say you prefer Nano, is perfectly fine. So open it up, and in this file, we do need to change a few things. First, let's get rid of all the lines after the global section because we're not going to be using them. Basically, these three sections, homes, printers, and print, it's just setting up things for sharing home directories and printers. Since we're not going to be using that today, I just want to get rid of it just to keep everything clean. All right, so now under the global section, we need to set the workgroup parameter to your internal workgroup name. The Windows default workgroup is workgroup with all caps, and the default here, as you can see, is Samba with all caps. You have three choices here. Change this line to workgroup, change all of your Windows clients to use the Samba workgroup, or you can change everything to another workgroup name. I'm just going to go the easy route and just run with workgroup here. So let's just get rid of Samba and then add workgroup there. Easy enough. If you want, you can explore changing the other global settings, but for now they work fine as they are. Now we need to add a new section to define our file share. I've copied in several lines here that configure the share and re really most share definitions will look something similar to this. Going over it line by line, the section header, my share is just what the file share is called. Comment is just a little description for your share. The path is the local path to the folder that you want to share. Browsable just refers to if it's set to yes, when Windows File Explorer searches for shares on a given server, whether or not that share will show up in the window. Guest OK determines whether or not you can allow guests who don't authenticate to your share. Usually you want to set this to no, unless you just really want to have a public share for whatever reason. Writable just says whether or not clients that have authenticated to the share can uh, write and modify files on the share. Invalid users just determines what Samba users are allowed to log in and use the share. 
This at BitGoblin is a user that I will be creating later and I'll show you how to do so in a later step. So once you have this, you can just write and quit. Next, you'll need to make sure you have a user that is able to authenticate and access the Samba share. If it doesn't already exist, you can create your user with the command user add. In this case, I'll do user add BitGoblin. User has been created. Now we need to set a password for the user, which is always good practice to do so. And all we do for that is password space username. In this case, password BitGoblin. Type in the password that you want to use. Type it again. And the password has been set. Easy stuff. Now that the user has been created, you'll also need to set a Samba password for your user, which is separate from your, your Unix password. That is done with SMB password dash A, and then your username. Once you hit enter, you'll be prompted for a password. This can be different from your, your local user password. You'll be prompted twice to enter it. And now we need to start doing some more permission -y stuff to make sure our user has access to write to the share. Because not only does the Samba config file determine who can actually authenticate and mount the share, we can also set ACLs that determine exactly which folders that a user or a group of users can uh, write to. To do that, we're just going to do group add, and then Samba, which creates a new group with the name of Samba. Then we're going to add our user to that Samba group by using user mod dash little a capital G, Samba, and then your username. And now we need to give that group read, write, and execute permissions on that shared folder. So to do that, we just do set facl, so set facl, dash capital R, dash little m, and then inside quotes, do g colon samba colon rwx. Close the quotes, and then slash srv slash my share. Oop. Got to type that path incorrectly. Hit enter, and then now that anyone in that samba group will have access to read, write, and execute files on that share. So at this point, Samba has been configured. Our user has access to read and write from the share. And at this point, all we need to do is just restart the Samba services. So let's just do systemctl restart SMB and NMB. And we have an error code. Why do we have an error code? Oops, so I just did a systemctl status L on the SMB service. And it seems like I forgot to remove the comments in the smb.com file because it doesn't support comments. So all I did was go back into that uh, smb.com file and then just got rid of the comments, saved and quit. And now we can restart that service again. Boom, no errors. And for certainty purposes, let's also just enable the SMB and NMB services to start at boot so that whenever our system reboots, And now one more quick thing I need to do is allow Samba through the local firewall since Alma Linux and really Red Hat based systems will ship with firewall D enabled and blocking most incoming traffic by default. So to do that, I will just do firewall dash CMD dash dash permanent dash dash zone equals public dash dash add dash service equals Samba and then firewall CMD dash reload. And now that's good. You will not need to do this, at least by default, on uh, Debian systems or Ubuntu or any other system that doesn't ship with a firewall by default. Cool, so at this point, your share should be configured and accessible over the network. But let's do some due diligence here and test it to make sure it actually works. So on my Windows 11 PC, I have Windows File Explorer opened. Then in the address bar, I'm just going to do two backslashes really quick then type in the IP address of my server, which is 10.7.10.226. That'll change depending on your network setup. Another backslash, and then the name of my share. Hit enter. It'll take a hot minute, but eventually you should be prompted to enter some network credentials. Ah, uh, yes, there we go. There's the window. So here we just enter the username and Samba password that we created earlier. So bitgoblin, and then test password, one, and then you can check the remember credentials checkbox if you so choose. Click OK. And now we have access to that share. We can just open up that test.txt file and we can see here that, you know, the text is there. If you really want to test it, you can, you know, type in some more text, hit save, and then go onto your server and open it up to make sure it actually saved to the server. But since we didn't get any errors, which should be pretty much good to go. We have access to the share, we can change files on it, and we can start mounting it everywhere else that we so choose. 
So that's it for the tutorial. I hope after editing it, it comes out pretty short since there really isn't too much to it. It's really just installing a package, changing a config file, setting permissions on the folder, and then restarting a service. I did spend a lot of time explaining things, but I do think it's really important to explain everything well enough so you all know exactly what's going on and you can better change things down the road to match your setup. If you didn't like the video, then you know what to do. But if you did like it, then go hit that like button, get subscribed, and click the bell icon so you don't miss future videos just like this one. Also, feel free to leave me any feedback for the video in the comment section below, or just shoot me some su suggestions for future Linux tutorials you'd like me to do. I have a Discord server for the BitGoblin community if you'd like to join it to get help on Linuxy stuff, or just to hang out and chat. I hope you all have a great day, and I will catch you in the next one.